Hello friends and welcome. I'm Sarah Liz and I am back with five emergency cards using the Spellbinders quick and easy card kit for October 2023. So I'm starting with an A2 panel and then a piece that measures three by five and a half. Then I'm cheating already on the first card. I have two silver strips. It's a matte silver cardstock that I just pulled from my stash. You guys know I have a bin full of strip dies just hanging around. Uh, then I have two strips of red that are one eighth of an inch and two strips that are three eighths of an inch. I'm only going to use one of them, but I wasn't sure yet which one. I'm going to start by gluing that pattern paper down to my A2 panel. The pattern paper, the colored card stock, all these die cut pieces, those all come in the kit. I am a little later than I wanted to be getting this video up and running. I have been really sick. If I'm a little growly. I don't know if it comes across on the video. The good news is I'm getting better. <laughs> the bad news is I wanted to show you this kit a week ago, two weeks ago. It is so good. There's so much in here. I have barely scratched the surface with these five cards and it is only available to order until the 27th of October. So I'm going to link below to this kit along with all of the other club kits from Spellbinders uh, for October, but I'm also going to link to some of their other Christmas card kits that they released previously because a bunch of them are on sale. Spellbinders is hosting a rock and sale right now. Um, and definitely it is worth checking out. I mean, there's better press plates on sale, you guys, and they haven't ever put better press on sale before. If you don't have a better press machine, remember you can glimmer hot foil with those as well. Totally worth it. Okay. So I was just gluing down strips. I wasn't doing anything fancy, but now we're making a shaker. I have a piece of acetate. It's just from some packaging that this card kit came in. And then I went around the back of that panel with all our pattern paper and cardstock strips. And I added double-sided tape on all four sides. And I'm gonna pull up three of them and wrap that plastic around it. On this one, since I've already done the first side, the top, then on the bottom of that, I don't wanna pull it too tight. I wanna leave room for my shaker bits because this guy's in the kit. Like, look, look at this. There are so many pieces in here and it's, darling. There's little candy canes and some shimmery sequins, some clay pieces. I put a ton in my little tray and I was like, you aren't going to use all of that, but I did. I did. And I'm really happy about it. Once it's all in there, I'm going to kind of shimmy it to try to get it to flatten out a little bit before I go folding this last one shut. And again, I'm trying to be careful not to pull too, too tight. Um, and then I just clip the corners because there's this little overlap of that acetate and I don't like that. I went and added score tape again on those four sides so that when we add it to our card base, the pieces that have acetate on them are still going to lay flat against my card base. But I will also go over everything with some wet glue so I have a little bit of wiggle room. And then I'm going to try my hardest to get that on there straight. You <laughs> guys, I just have been not quite myself. And so I feel like in this video, I am struggling with things that normally are not that challenging for me. Uh, so hopefully I'm showing you some tips and tricks along the way. Of if something simple is suddenly hard, like how do you go about working around that? I'm also going to use emergency sentiments for all but one of the cards. This one, I am using the more holiday sentiments. This one came out on October 15th. I will link to that video below. This is a free printable for my subscribers and it comes with circle sentiments and strip sentiments. So I am just trimming out a bunch of those strip sentiments. There's tick marks on either side to help you cut them out straight. And I have this one that says slay all day, S-L-E-I-G-H. And I just thought that was so <laughs> funny with our little Santa in the sky. And I'm going to glue that onto my 3 8 inch strip. And I'm going to leave a border on three sides and then I'll trim off the fourth side until it matches. And it's pretty easy. I will just glue that straight down to my card base, but certainly in the spirit of emergency cards, you could leave that sentiment off until you're ready to give your card away. For our second card, I have my card base and then this piece is three and a half by five and a half. 
I have two pink strips that are a quarter inch by five and a half inches and then another three eighth inch strip that I will use for a sentiment. I am bringing in a die here. This is the fluted classics circle and I am using the middle pieces from that. This is hands down one of my most used dies ever. And it is so, so good and on sale right now. So maybe check it out. They left it out of the warehouse sale and I was like, oh, no, but it's on sale today. If you don't have the fluted classic circles, you could just use regular dies. The smaller one is about two and three quarters of an inch and the larger one is about three and a half inches. So I have just glued my pattern paper right down the middle of my card base and then I will put my pink cardstock strips on either side. I just find that this is a way to conserve the solid colored cardstock in the kit um, by using strips instead of putting an entire matting layer behind that pattern paper. And it's not a big difference. I don't know that anyone would notice. So I have glued my smaller circle inside of the larger one, but to step this up a little bit, I am spraying it with some shimmer spritz. And then I just used my heat tool to dry it because I'm impatient, but you certainly could skip that step. I'm adding some one millimeter foam tape all over the back, and then I'll add a little bit of wet glue. Again, I was struggling with some things. And so that wet glue just gives me a little bit of wiggle time before that foam tape grabs on. Then I'm bringing in a double dose of figgy pudding. <laughs> I've never eaten figgy pudding, have you? I don't. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure what it is. Maybe like fruitcake. I can tell you, I find it hilarious. And I made an entire set of sentiments for figgy pudding and penguin puns. I will link to that video and the download uh, below as well. <laughs> but I am trimming out one that says getting figgy with it because that is my favorite one. I originally put this entire printable together for that sentiment because there is a dancing figgy puddin die set from Spellbinders and like the little legs swing back and forth and I just had to. So I wanted to get some more use out of it. I'm bringing it in here. I am using my tweezers and my grid mat to get that straight because what I edited out was that I put it down and I was like, I don't even know if that is straight. So I pulled it back up. Tweezers really helping me out. That finishes up card number two. For card number three, I have a piece that is three and three quarter by five and a half inches, two quarter inch by five and a half inch strips, and a three eighth inch strip as well. There are a whole bunch of ornaments in this set, and so I really wanted to show them off here. I started by trying to put my pattern paper down in the middle of the card, and I couldn't do it. <laughs> like, I just kept pulling it up. So I was like, well, start at the fold, right? The fold is the part of the card you can't trim off. So I put my little strip of pink cardstock right up against that fold and then butted up my pattern paper against that. And it was much, much easier for me. I'll put another strip down at the bottom and then I'm just going to start arranging my die cuts. I'm having a hard time like remembering where I had things on cards. It's been a week of this, you guys. Every video you see from me this week, my voice is a little growly um, and I am misplacing things. If, it's like a little Easter egg hunt. See if you can spot. But I have decided to just, for now, use my sticky clear see-through mat to help me make sure I get things placed where I want them. Normally, these are pieces that I would just pick up one at a time and add some glue and put them back down, but it, I was struggling with it. I was really, really struggling. So I pulled out a bunch of those sentiments that I trimmed out earlier, and I was just kind of checking to see like which sentiments did I like for the theme of the card, but also how long were they and how well would they fit this one says, I believe in your magic too. I love Christmas. I love sort of the magic of it, but I also think there are people in my life that are a special kind of magic. And so to me, this is a card you send to someone who just does things I feel like I can't do, right? Like life is too crazy and too hectic for me to manage that. And so this, I, I have a couple of people in mind for this sentiment and I've been putting it on all kinds of cards lately. 
I'm gonna use some of that same one millimeter thin foam tape on the back of this just to give it a little bit of dimension. And then again, I cheated and I brought in just a little bit of my matte silver cardstock for a second matte. That's a half inch matte behind there. But that will finish up this card and it's really simple, but I love it a lot. For this next card, I have my card base and an A2 piece of pink cardstock that's four and a quarter by five and a half. And then this piece measures four by five and a quarter. So I'll end up with a mat on all four sides. And I'm just gonna start by gluing those two pieces together. There are always a ton of die cut pieces that come in these kits. And I chose my very favorites for this card. I cannot get over it. I'm gonna go ahead and add both of these pieces to my card base, lots of wet glue. I find that holding my card in my hand so I can make sure it's sort of lining up on, on all four sides is helping as well. This tree, it's massive and so pretty. So I'm gonna use the tree and some presents and then these giant twinkly stars. If you wanted to use an emergency sentiment, I would put it here. That's a two inch circle and that would be a great mat for emergency sentiments. I'm gonna go ahead and glue down all my pieces or two of my pieces, um, but in the end, there are all kinds of chipboard pieces and puffy stickers and stuff I haven't even shown you yet that are really good in this kit. So here are the puffy stickers and then there's two sheets of these chipboard stickers. So I'm gonna make a sentiment out of those. Sometimes I feel like these kits don't have great options for sentiments, but this one does. And this one says Merry Magical Holiday and I love the alliteration of the Merry Magical and the sort of mix of the very colorful Mary and then just that strip for the magical holiday. I do add a little bit of glue. They're stickers, but they're not super sticky. Like they don't make them like they did when I was a kid. So uh, yeah, I always add a little wet glue to those. And once I have that placement down, then I'll glue down my stars. I just wanted to make sure I had enough room, but that finishes up this card. It might be my favorite, but I, I don't know. I have a bunch in this set that I really like. This is my card base for our next card. And I'm gonna open it up and on the front of the card, I am gonna score this at one and a quarter inches. We're gonna do a fun fold, but not anything crazy, just a little bit of a fun fold. And then I'm gonna take that little flap and I'm gonna fold it back. So I have a Z fold that isn't even, okay? I have a red strip that is one and a quarter inches by five and a half inches, and it'll fit right on that little flap we made. And then a piece of pattern paper that is three inches by five and a half inches, and that will tuck right underneath it on the other front of our card. I'm gonna start by gluing down this red strip. And again, I'm gonna pick this up and I'm just gonna kind of hold it in my hands with the wet glue to make sure I get the, the sides of it lined up right. I was struggling to do it with it sitting flat on my tabletop. So that worked pretty well. And then here I'm going to add my pattern paper inside that flap. I've been using these little trays from scrapbook.com. Can I tell you they are absolutely magical. I, I wish they were ever so slightly bigger. It's not big enough to hold an entire card base, but they've been great when I have a bunch of little pieces of die cuts or here these a bunch of little die cut individual pieces. Uh, I bought the 12 pack and I'm gonna order some more. I just need help with organizing while I'm making multiple cards in a video. And this has been a tremendous help. So I have like Santa's list that I just glued sort of hanging off that little red flap. And then here's my blue circle. I put that one millimeter foam tape and I left a little strip without the foam tape. That's gonna overlap the red flap because I want that to have a little lift. You can see I'm kind of pointing at it there. That red piece wants to pop up a little and I like that about it. So then I'm gonna go ahead and start gluing down my stars and all my other little um, bits and pieces on here. Again, this is a pretty simple card but I still, I just love it. I think it's a little bit different. I've not made a card with this kind of Z fold before. I put my tree on the inside and I was like, we need something on the left. So I went and grabbed some more of those present die cut pieces. You get two of each piece, which is wonderful. And I will glue that down 
inside my card as well. Then I'm gonna grab one of my circle sentiments from the More Holiday Sentiments Kit. And this one says, "'Tis the season to be jolly." I love the font on the jolly on this one. I have been super nerding out about fonts lately. If you have a favorite font, let me know because uh, I, I wanna know about it and maybe put it on an emergency card. That finishes up our final card and you can see the little lift on that red strip that we get. It's got a fun outside, a fun inside. Let's take one more look at all five cards. I would love to know which one is your favorite. If you're interested in the free printable sentiments I was using on these cards, I will link to all of those below. They are 100% free for subscribers. I will also link to this kit and all the other club kits for October, along with previous Christmas card kits that they've released because a bunch of them are on sale. Thank you so much for spending your time with me and I will see you next time.